car and tonight we are doing a hydraulic handbrake install into the bucket. Now I've already taken liberty of doing a few bits and pieces like loosening off my center console which I did the other week in preparation of doing this on the weekend but we didn't get there. So what we're going to do is get rid of all this junk, get rid of my old non-working handbrake because the cable's busted and then we'll get into it. So I'll pause it there and we'll start pulling things to pieces. So here's our handbrake. Now any idiot can buy one of these off eBay or wherever. I got it from when we went to World Time Attack. It only cost me 50 bucks. Seems pretty sturdy. It's got a cylinder on there. Now our auto electrician Yuli has gone out and got me these fittings because for whatever stupid reason it didn't come with them and they're an absolute bastard to try and let track down. So got those, we've got some more fittings. So the idea is to run them into them, run them into the hard line and then plumb that in somewhere. But the boys have got a bit of a test subject in Brendan's own little spin wagon. You can see here he's starting to set it all up. So that's how ours will look somewhat. We've got it out. I didn't really want to bust up the carpet too much. But as you can see, this is where the hydraulic one's going to sit. Put him in there. Get all the little things sorted out, which um, Adam's currently doing the line for. So, a bit of a look there. He's on the phone to his wife. He's fixed up the fitting. He's just tightening it up for us now. So, that should be all sweet shortly. And then we can progress on. So, we're down to the nitty gritty, I guess. We're trying to work out how we're going to mount this thing. So that's where the factory position is, as Adam will tell us. What other options do we have? Um, well, what, you can go angled, come back more, forward more, what do you want to do? Just remember your gears. I'm going to say maybe we should get the, do you want to get the center console? We'll whack the center console in. Get a bit of an idea where it should sit. So I guess if that's in second gear, Maybe we should have it on a slight angle. You tell me what's comfortable. I reckon that'd be the go. Because if I'm coming around the corner, hit second, clutch it, you probably need a little bit more than fingers. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's right there, it's yeah. easy access. I think we might leave it there. Um, can you just hold it there for a second? Yep. Nah, your line's run to the side. If I'm for plenty room. Beautiful. Now we make the incision. <laughs> Now 
now we've got the fun task of trying to put the bolt, which unfortunately is located straight underneath the tail shaft. So Adam's trying to work out a way of getting up there without having to pull the tail shaft up because it's a pain in the ass job and we don't want to do it. While we're under here, this is pretty much what the underbody of a Gemini looks like. <laughs> Crap house diff, this thing called a torque tube, which almost everyone with power breaks. And they run a tail shaft piece along there to a gearbox. Because this is an early TX Gemini, it runs this flat floor arrangement. So the seats actually bolt through the floor as opposed to a um, conventional seat mount, like a normal car would have. Fortunately not much with this cheap bucket racer is normal. <laughs> this exhaust actually came off my old car. We tried lying around we put it in because we had it and we needed an exhaust. It's gonna be exciting YouTube. Here's three minutes of a tail shaft. <laughs> yeah the tail shaft. So as you can see here that's the whole well the stupid phone zoomed in on the tail shaft. Zoom over there you stupid thing. That's where Yuli's trying to come through. It's almost there. I'd say it's stuck on the underlay. Put a screwdriver through it. That's it. Hello. Hello, sailor. I'm gonna have to put... That's through. Is there a nut? It's done. It is? This is why I come to Yuli, because Yuli has all the flash expensive tools and I have cheap garbage. So, if you have a mate with expensive tools, <laughs> this is a good way to get friendly with your mate. This is Adam D. Butte flaring tool, which is of many uses, because without it I would have been pretty screwed. So that's set up in the jig to make a female, or what they call a female, it's just a, a cone fitting I suppose you could call it. This is the jig that pushes it in, separates it, just line that up, make so sure it's fairly square, as you can see, and just a nice gentle turn, you don't have to go all the way. This is my least favourite song at weddings for anyone listening at home. <laughs> Suddenly the YouTube channel gets spammed with 100,000 Beyonce fans. How dare you? Why? How could you? <laughs> so is there like a correct amount of pressure you're supposed to put on it or just uh, enough so it's seated in there? Is it? Just so you don't crush it. Yeah. It's got little jaws to hold it. Okay. There is actually a certain distance you're meant to have it out. But here we are, just guessing. We're it's an estimated a, guess. We're here for a good time. <laughs> and a long time. Well, at this rate, yeah. Because I'll just push that sideways, but that's okay. Have you got the fitting on the on the end before we get too far? Yeah, yes, we have. Yes. Okay. How does that look, you? Does it look pretty cold? Uh, maybe, maybe a little, little bit more, more, yeah. I did the red car's um, oil feed. Did it all up nice, did this, did that, and forgot to put the fitting on the other end. <laughs> How's it look? I reckon that'll sit pretty nice, I reckon. So the fitting the boys have made up looks good. So Adam's just going to chop that line there, because we don't need that kilometre of <laughs> brake line. And then he'll do his flare tool. Tooling, perhaps. Seat the fitting back in there. And hopefully, be ready to time or well, time to uh, bleed up the brakes. Beautiful, lovely. Thing of beauty. Have a go at that. Yuli's wagon, which we looked at before, and he they did the install of that one. He actually has drum brakes. My coupe um, had a really crap house diff in it. So basically, I put a late model diff in it. I actually put Commodore disc brakes on it. You can't really see here, but anyway. I got the rotors done to Gemini pattern, so the Gemini is a 4x100, but it still runs a Commodore caliper and all the other bits and pieces, so we're hoping that when the brake is engaged it pulls a lot harder than what Brendan's wagon will, 
But again, we'll find out how that goes on the weekend, which is what this is all about. I don't know if it's just a boot or if it's one of the fittings, but something's making a hissing noise. Mm, okay, we'll be back. So we had a bit of a setback. Um, we noticed that the feed line fitting that we've been given, unfortunately, is a little bit short. So it goes into the actual line properly, but unfortunately, it's that little bit too short. So we're not getting a proper seal in it. In there, he's not working. So the boys have made up this Duva. Looks pretty sweet. So we're gonna fit that up and see how we go. That's it, that's the end. Oh. <laughs>